For number 37, you have two bikers um, east, five miles per hour. So this particular biker is going east, and I'm, I'm going to call that Y. And he's going at a rate of five miles per hour. So that's dy to change in y with respect to time equals five. And then another biker, he's going north, and he's going at 12 miles per hour. I'm going to call that x, and his dx dt is equal to 12 miles per hour. And approximately how fast is the distance between them changing? Well, that's this distance here. This distance, they want to know how fast that distance is changing. And I'm going to call that psi z, but the distance changing after three hours is dz <coughs> dt. Now, I'm, of course, I'm going to do this the long way. Uh, one student of mine just did 512. And it wound up being 13, and he got the correct answer of choice C for number 37 as, as quickly as that. Just did the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I'm going to use uh, implicit differentiation, so I'm going to set it up as Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And his way was correct. He got the right answer. I differentiate everything. Nothing's constant. The entire triangle is, is growing. So 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. I know what these values are. Equals 2z dz dt, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for dz dt. I can divide everything out by two and eliminate the twos. And then after three hours, the x value, three times 12, this x value is going to be, he, he will have traveled 36 miles. So it's going to be 36 dx dt, which is times 12. Plus, after three hours, after three hours at five miles per hour, this distance here will be 15. So the y value will be 15 times the rate, which is dy dt, which is five, is going to equal this value z times dz dt. Now to find z, I have to do the Pythagorean theorem, which is 36 squared plus 15 squared, and that equals... ...39. 39 dz dt. Now I have to do some arithmetic. So I add these up and divide by 39, and that should give me what dz dt is. 36 times 12 plus 15 times 5 over 39, and that's the long way of finding out the rate of change between the two bikers. Choice C. <clears throat> Gives me a derivative, and it says that this derivative from 3.3.1 is actually 2.377. They already calculated that for me. Um, they want to know what f of 3.1 is. I see here that f of 3 equals 6. f of 3 equals 6. So I'm going to use good old FTC part 2 to solve this. So the integral from 3 to 3.1 of f prime of x dx is going to equal, I'm not going to put that down yet, it's going to equal f of 3.1, and that's what I'm looking for, minus f of 3. Now, f of 3 is going to give me 6, so minus 6. I'm looking for f of 3.1, and it tells me it already calculated that for me. They're being kind, so that's going to equal 0.2377. And I'm just going to solve this for f of 3.1. I just add 6 to both sides, and that's going to give me 6.2377, which rounds to 6.238. For number 39, you can see this is one that I cut and pasted in there from the BC. This is actually a BC question. It's actually an algebra 2 question, perhaps even an algebra 2 question, not an algebra 1 question. They want me to find the infinite sum, and I noticed that it's a geometric series, and it's got a common ratio. The absolute value of the ratio is less than 1, so that means this is going to converge. And this has a really nice zippy way to find the, the infinite sum. If I throw a 0 in, this gives me 1, 2 times 1, so the first term of this sequence is going to be 2, and I divide that by 1 minus the common ratio. So you take the first term and you divide it by 1 minus the common ratio, and this is actually going to give me 2 over 1 minus negative one half. So that's going to give me one plus one half, which is three halves. So that's going to equal two over three halves. That's going to give me two divided by three over two. KFC that, that's going to give me two times two over three. So the answer is just going to be four thirds, which in this particular problem is choice A. Volume of revolution, I have y equals five, and I have this crazy equation of x to the fourth. So I'm going to solve that for y so I can put it in my calculator. So let's see here. I'm going to add y to both sides and subtract three x squared and add three to both sides. So that's going to give me five x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 3 is equal to y. And I'm going to enter that and y equals 5 into the, the calculator. And y equals 5x squared. Oh, 5x to the fourth. Don't forget you have to write arrow to get down. Minus 3x squared plus 3. Let me go to my window. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But it's definitely not going to be 200, so I'll put 8y min of negative 6. Definitely not going to be 1,000. I'll put maybe 12. And let's see what that looks like. Here's y equals 5. Here comes the x to the fourth. And I'm, I'm going to get a nicer look at that. That's a pretty good graph. But I'm going to do a thing. <clears throat> so the graph of this is pretty symmetric. I have the big W. I have the y equals 5. There's my y equals 5. And I have the big W. And I'm revolving about the x-axis. So the mirror image is going to be at y equals negative 5. And it's going to be a big M. A mirror image M. Sorry. <clears throat> and it's going to be a washer. If you recall doing this. 
So the formula for a washer is going to be pi integral from, I need to find out where this cross is here and here. <coughs> R squared, but not washer is going to be outer radius squared, which is going to be the 5, minus the inner radius squared, which is going to be the equation, which in this case is going to be 5 squared minus, and it's going to be my y1 squared. So I just need to find out what the integral is with respect to x. Need to find those limits of integration. And it should be simple enough. I'm going to hit second calc, um, intersect. Because I need to find out where they cross each other. Enter, 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 and there it is. X equals 1 and X equals 5. So I think it's safe to say it's symmetric. It's going to be negative 1 to 1. From negative 1 to 1, from negative 1 to 1. Of the outer radius squared, which is 5, minus the inner radius squared, which in this case is my Y1 on the graph. Oh, incorrect. It's actually my Y2. See it? It's my Y sub 2. So I'm just going to enter it into the calculator. <clears throat> Don't forget to enter the pi, because it's pi r squared, math 9, from negative 1 to 1, of 25. I could have actually done y1 squared, minus y2 squared, with respect to x, and 98.695, and there it is, it's choice D. It's choice D. For number 41, they want to find the approximation of the area bounded by cosine, they say cosine squared, Remember, it's tough to type that into our calculator. And sine squared. So when we type it in, we're going to bracket it up and then square the whole thing. So let's see what the graph of that looks like. Um, let's recall which one's which. So blue is my cosine and red is my sine. So now we got to find out from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. I think they intersect between that. <clears throat> so I want to see where they intersect first. Um, maybe I'll do a second calc value and determine where pi over 4 is. Second pi divided by 4. And that's going to tell me, ooh, that's right where they intersect. That's nice. So now, that means the sine graph is going to be on the top for that portion. Second, oops, pi. <laughs> Excuse me, I need to put a 3 pi divided by 4 for that interval. See the interval in the back? It's from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. So I, I determined that pi over 4 is that intersection. Now I want to see if 3 pi over 4 is that intersection. And hopefully it is. And there it is. So, this is going to be a decent interval. It's going to be an integral of the top minus the bottom. dx from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. And for this particular graph, the sine curve was on the top. Let's see again, the red curve is on the top for this portion. And the red curve is y2. So I'm just going to go right in and label that there as y sub 2. And that one is y sub 1. No square, nothing like that. Just pretty basic. Second quit. Math 9. From pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. <coughs> Let's check again of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. with respect to x, and it's 1, choice A. For number 41, it is choice A. So to attack this problem, I need to find the second derivative of this. So the first derivative, and then the second derivative, and I need to see where that equals zero, and that will give me the point of inflection. So, as you can see, I've already graphed it. So, this is my first equation, this is my, my first derivative, and this is my second derivative. So, right there is where I want to see if, if that's where it equals zero. So, I'm going to plug these values over here on the left end. Or I'm just going to go ahead and find the, the zero for that. So, second calc, zero. And I want to go to the third graph and do my left bound. Now, this isn't going to give me a 3 pi over 4 or anything, so i got to be able to interpret the decimal. So, there's my left bound. And there's my right bound. I don't want to guess. Oh, there it is. 3.14. Oh, that's easy enough. It's going to be at pi. It's going to be at pi. Choice D for number 42. Now, this one's a bit of a challenge. The store buys batches of 100 and pays the company $800 for each batch of 100 sold. So, for each item, they're getting $8. 800 divided by 100. So, $800. $8 for, for each item. That's not their total profit, but that's the profit on each item. That's the, cost, the, the payment for each item. Now, the cost for them to make each item is x to the 3 halves, or 1.5, over 12, plus 5x minus 10. So, the total profit is going to be the total profit is going to equal the payment minus the cost. So it's going to be 8x minus c of x. And I already have that entered into the calculator. There's the cost function. There's the, the total profit function is 8x minus that. The window is very touchy. Um, we're only dealing in quadrant one. So I took my maximum out to 1,000 a, a and my minimum negative 3 and my y max up to 1,900. And then I graphed it. And that's what I got. Notice it's, it's sort of parabolic. And that's from the, the 2. The 2 is 1.5. So now I'm going to find the max, second calc, uh, maximum. So I do a left bound, and I do a right bound. And I don't want to guess, so if I sell 586, 576 items, 
my profit is going to be five hundred eighty-six dollars. So that's going to give me choice C. Choice C. I don't like how they made it that close. So there's my graph for x squared minus nine, and I know it goes through at three. So if I want to calculate the value at three, it's probably going to be zero. But this only goes in quadrant four. It says the fourth quadrant. So that's going to be from zero to three. <coughs> And every cross section that known is a square. So I have a square here coming out. It's actually coming straight out of the paper, but I can't draw it that well. So for the cross sections, the formula is from zero to three of the area of one section dx. Now the area is this length here squared. So area is going to equal y1 squared. That's all. dx. So I'm just going to go right to the calculator and set up that integral. So math nine from zero to three of the graph squared. Very nice function. dx. And it should generate the answer pretty quickly. 129.6. So number 44 is choice D. Alright, the whole idea behind number 45, well, two ideas is average value. You're asking for the average value, and that's important. So right off the get-go, I know I'm going to have to divide everything by 6, because the average value from 1 to 7 on the integral is going to be 1 over 7 minus 1 times the integral of 1 to 7 of whatever this all comes out to equal. And the idea of this whole string is that we want to get this to look like that over there. So from 1 to 5 of any function, plus 5 to 7 of that same exact function. Notice these combine to be the single function. These combine up to render this single function. And that's the whole game plan for a problem such as this that we're going to try. So let's see. <clears throat> Gives me some information. It says from 1 to 7 of f equals 6, but from 7 to 1 of g equals 12. So I'm going to get a little bit of information down here. So 1 to 7 of f equals 6. And from 7 to 1, so that means from 1 to 7 of g is going to equal negative 12. And I'm not being very formal. I'm not putting my f of x, dx, and all this stuff. I just want to get the idea down on paper. So now, it talks. I'm going to save that. That's going to go in my, my toolbox. I'm going to use those later. I'm going to need those ideas later to figure out what actual digit this works out to equal. So from 1 to 7 of h of x, 1 to 7 of h of x, dx equals this monster. And notice I have from 1 to 5, 1 to 5 of 2f minus g plus... 7 to 5. Well, I need it to be 5 from 5 to 7. I need it to look like this. From 1 to 5, 5 to 7. And they're giving it to me 1 to 5, 7 to 5. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 to 7. But when I do that, I have to change this out front to a negative. So that's going to give me plus minus g of x minus 2f. Now that negative can distribute across. So this is going to give me a plus again from 5 to 7 of negative g plus 2f or 2f. That negative goes to 2f and I'm allowed to switch that up. So notice I have a plus. 1 to 5 of qf minus g plus 5 to 7. Now that I have this idea, I can write it as a single integral like I have over here on the left. See how this is the same as this? So that means I can come over here and rewrite this long, strung out integral with the plus sign as an entire integral from 1 to 7 of qf minus g. <clears throat> from earlier, it told me that 1 to 7 of f was 6. 1 to 7 of f was 6. So I can rewrite this a little bit. This is going to give me two new integrals. 1 to 7, 2f. Minus 1 to 7 of g. Let's see. F was 6 and g was negative 12. So this is going to be 6. So 2 times 6 minus negative 12. Remember, 1 to 7 of f equals 6. 1 to 7 of g equals negative 12. 1 to 7 of g equals negative 12. 1 to 7 of f equals 6, but there's a 2 out front. So this is going to give me 12 plus 12. And that's 24. However, I was supposed to do the average value from 1 to 7 of 2f minus g. Average value is 1 over 7 minus 1 out front. And all this equals 24. So it's going to be 1 over 6 times 24, which gives me a value of 4.